Hello everyone, I am SR Kovind. I will be taking the presentation on the topic self lubricating bearings. The contents for this presentation are introduction, self lubricating bearings, types of porous bearings, materials used in the manufacture of auto metallurgy based bearings, production of porous bearings, advantages, disadvantages, application, and conclusion. Porous materials are typical powder metallurgy products which have controlled amount of interconnected porosity inbuilt into the component for specific applications. These engineered components are unique to powder metallurgy and are difficult to produce by other techniques. Self lubricating bearings produced by the powder metallurgy roots are unique and one of the large volume products made by powder metallurgy root. They are economical, suitable for high production rates and can be manufactured to precision tolerances. Porous bearings must have sufficient amount of interconnected porosity uniformly distributed throughout the matrix. Lubricating oil is stored in the pores and feeds the bearing surface through the interconnected pores when the temperature increases during operation. Self-lubricating bearings Self-lubricating bearings are one of the large volume products made by powder metallurgy root. Self-lubricating bearings must have sufficient amount of interconnected porosity uniformly distributed throughout the matrix. Lubricating oil is stored in these pores and put to the bearing surface through the pores when the temperature increases during operation. Any oil which is forced from the loaded zone of the bearing is later reabsorbed by the pores through capillary action. An important aspect deciding the performance and service life of the bearing is its design and fabrication. Key factors in this respect are physical properties as well as the performance factor or simply the PV factor. The PV factor is the product of bearing load P expressed in pounds per square inch of projected bearing area and the surface velocity V of the shaft expressed in feet per minute. PV factor of a bearing is specified by a limiting value, which should not exceed during service for satisfactory bearing performance. In the case of bearing subjected to continuous operation for prolonged periods or when operating at high temperatures, the PV factor approaches the limiting value. It is possible to replenish the lubricant supply by applying oil at the outer diameter or at the ends of the bearing. The oil gets sucked into the pores by capillary action. After sintering, the bearing must be sized to specific dimension. Sizing reduces interconnected porosity and gives greater strength with lower ductility and smooth finish. This image shows the schematic working of self-lubricating bearings. At the first image, it is in stationary position where the oil is fed at the, downs, uh, at the bottom side of the bearing. And the second image shows the rotating shaft. When the shaft rotates, the, bear, uh, the bearing moves and the oil gets supplied to all the uh, surface of the bearing. After the, uh, the, uh, the third image shows the after operation where the, uh, the excess oil gets reabsorbed into the, lobe, into the bearings through the interconnected pores of the bearings. Important requirements of a powder metallurgy or porous bearings or self lubricating bearings are Good lubrication characteristics with minimum maintenance and long service life. Adequate mechanical strength including fatigue strength over a range of temperatures. Good wear characteristics. Good heat dissipation capacity. Ability to withstand both static and impact loads. Must not weld or seize with the mating parts during service. Types of porous bearings. Porous metal bearings. Most porous metal bearings are made of either bronze or iron with 10 to 35 volume percentage interconnected voids or porosity. These bearings can operate for long periods of time without an additional supply of lubricant. They can be used in inaccessible or inconvenient places where re-lubrication would be difficult. The figure 2 shows the porosity analysis of bearing surfaces. 
it shows that uh, the A diagram shows the uh, microstructure of uh, iron content low uh, bearings which shows a total porosity of 20 percentage and the C diagram shows uh, the porosity uh, micro uh, microstructure of uh, iron content high bearings having a total porosity of 12 percentage it shows that when the iron content or epic content is high total porosity uh, decreases and where the epic content is low total porosity increases dry bearings dry bearings are made from metallic alloys or from fluoropolymer like teflon this bearing material is soft enough to handle interference fits with minimal stick slip and has a low coefficient of friction oil impregnated bearings oil impregnated bearings include excellent self lubrication property a wide range of operating temperature the temperature range about minus 200 degrees Celsius to 250 degrees Celsius. Low thermal expansion, no water absorption and silent operation. The extended bearing life even in severe environments with no need for external lubrication. Reduces maintenance times and extended service life are other attractive advantages of oil impregnated bearings. Materials used in the manufacture of powder metallurgy bearings Bronze It is the most common porous bearing material with 90% copper and 10% tin. The addition of graphite is also done. These bearings can be produced with a wide range of porosity and have excellent wear resistance, ductility and corrosion resistance. Ease of lubrication, low cost and ease of production gives this material a wide range of application. Figure 3 shows the, cell, uh, the image of self lubricating bronze bearings. Leaded bronze. In this type of material, both tin and copper contents are low in comparison to bronze based bearings. Lead content can go up to 16%. The main advantage of this material are its low coefficient of friction and good resistance to galling and these advantages if the lubricant up supply is interrupted. Galling is a form of wear caused by adhesion between sliding surfaces. Galling is caused by a combination of friction and adhesion between the surface. It is common where there is an inadequate lubrication between the surface. The next mainly used material for manufacturing self lubricating bearings are iron. Iron is commonly used for manufacturing low-cost bearings in automotive applications, farm for making farm equipment and machine tools. Copper up to 10% is added to iron powder for improving compressive strength. The figure 4 shows uh, the image of cast iron uh, bearings. Leaded iron. Addition of lead to iron improves speed capabilities and reduces cost. The next commonly used material for production of self lubricating bearings are aluminium. Aluminium is used in some application as they provide cooler operation condition, light weight and has great tolerance for misalignments and longer oil life than porous bronze or iron bearings. The figure 5 shows aluminium based ball bearings. The explanation for the rest of the slides will be given by my teammate uh, Gautam Raj. Thank you. Hello everyone, I am Gautam Raj. I will be taking the presentation of production of porous bearings. Porous bearings account for a majority of powder, met powder metallurgy bearings in use. These bearings must have a sufficient amount of interconnected porosity uniformly distributed throughout the matrix. They must also meet the desired strength levels and dimensional accuracy. The steps involved in the manufacturing of porous bearings are powder selection, where the powder are selected mainly copper powder tin powder and graphite powder are used mixing is done prior to compaction and the next step is pressing the mixed powders are then compacted to the required dimension using automated compacted process and is followed by sintering where 
sindering is done in 800 to 850 degrees Celsius. The next step is sizing where the self lubricating bearings are sized after sindering to control dimension. The sindered parts are placed in a basket and subjected to vacuum to remove all the moisture and air that are entrapped within the pores. And the resultant is a finished part. Powder selection. Powders for bronze base bearings use elemental copper powder made by electrolytic atomized or reduction route. Tin powders are made by atomization. In the case of iron bearings, atomized or reduced powders are employed. Mixing. Mixing of elemental powders is done prior to compaction. For making brown bearings, copper powders is mixed with tin and graphite powders. Lead powder is added in brown, lead bronze. Both graphite and lead serve to improve the pressing characteristic and enhance the lubrication capabilities. It is important to ensure thorough mixing in order to avoid segregation of tin particles during sintering resulting in non-uniform sintering. Compaction. The mixed powders are then compacted to the required dimension using automated compaction process. The powder is pressed at a room temperature. Proper green density is achieved by controlling the compaction pressure. Green density distribution is another important factor. Uneven green density distribution may cause non-uniform sintering and lead to poor oil impregnation. Sintering. Sintering is carried out in continuous mesh belt furnace and a reducing atmosphere. During sintering, the lubricants are driven off at a temperature between 400 and 450 degrees Celsius. During this stage, the low melting tin powders melt and diffuse into the copper matrix. The sintering temperature is then raised to 800 to 850 degrees Celsius and the combats are held for time ranging from 5 to 8 minutes. Sintering may cause the growth of combat which must be taken care of during the design stage. Sizing All the self-lubricating bearings are sized after sintering to control their dimension within the allow tolerance. This is to enable the smooth operation of porous metal bearings, which require suitable clearance between the shaft and the housing. Standard charts are available indicating the recommended bearing clearance for different types of bearings. Infiltration. After sizing, the bearings are impregnated with the lubricant. This term refers to the filling of the pores in the cindered part with either oil or a polymer. Oil impregnation can be done using immersion to hot oil at 80 to 100 degrees Celsius for a time of 30 minutes. Impregnation is also carried out under vacuum, high pressure or a combination of both. The most widely used technique involves a combination of vacuum and pressure. In this approach, the cindered parts are placed in a basket and subjected to a vacuum to remove all the moisture and air entrapped within the pores. The oil is then introduced into the chamber and allowed to enter the pores. External pressure may be employed using air or nitrogen at 60 to 70 psi pressure to aid the process. The pressure is then slowly brought to the atmospheric pressure and the excess oil is drained. This is the process showing the production of porous bearings step by step. Advantages of self lubricating bearings Since these bearings can operate for a long period of time without an additional supply of lubricant, they can be used in inaccessible or inconvenient place where real lubrication would be difficult. It has an excellent property, it is still an emergency condition. Application in installation when pollution with drop down lubricant is not permissible. Application for oscillating movements and low speed of gliding surfaces where a continuous oil film cannot be created on compact bearings. Application of vertical or inclined position where a lubricating oil could drain off from compact bearings. It has a good lubrication characteristic with minimum maintenance and long service life. Adequate me mechanical strength including fatigue strength over a range of temperature. 
good wear characteristic and heat dissipation capacity. Disadvantages of self lubricating bearings Oil saturated porous bearings have limited circumferential speed of supported shaft owing to a thin thickness of the created filling. Due to a considerably high proportion of pores, cindered bearings have low strength and they are sensitive to impacts and bruising by edges in comparison with a compact material. Self lubricating bronze bearing is required for periodic maintenance. All sliding surfaces must be kept free of debris. Application of self lubricating bearings Self lubricating bearings are used in fractional horsepower motor used in electric fan, vacuum cleaners, washing machine, refrigerator, air condition, etc. Copper lead bearings are employed in automotive applications. Heavy duty application bearings are made from copper lead alloy having an overlay layer of lead or lead tin alloy. Such an overlay confers excellent fatigue property to the bearing besides improving anti seizure characteristic and corrosion resistance to oil. Cindered metal self lubricating bearings are widely used in home appliances. Aerospace application in particular require resilient low friction bearing to help minimize risk of having malfunction at 10,000 feet or more above the ground. Additionally, many of the components in an aircraft are difficult to access and service and thus benefit significantly from the self-lubricating bearings long service life. Conclusion Self-lubricating bearings can operate for long periods of time without an additional supply of lubricant. They can be used in inaccessible or inconvenient places where re-lubrication would be difficult. These bearings can be produced with a wide range of porosities and have excellent wear resistance, ductility and corrosion resistance. Ease of lubrication, low cost and ease of production give it a wide range of application.